to another GCSE economics video brought to you by Mr. Goff at mrgoff.com. Today's video will be about the basic economic problem. Consider this scenario. You get home and find out that your house needs to be fumigated. Therefore, you're going away on a three-day camping trip with your family. There's only so much that's going to fit in the car and you've been told that you can only take what you need for the trip. But what does need mean? You might like to stop the video for a moment and have a think about what you think needs might mean. In economics, needs are just the things you need to survive. What might that include for this trip? You might like to pause the video again while you have a think about it. Hopefully some of the things you've thought of would include a tent for shelter, warm clothes, food and water, a first aid kit, and possibly cooking equipment. In economics, anything that goes beyond your basic needs of food, shelter, warmth, and clothing is considered to be a want. Wants are pretty much unlimited. If you're anything like my nephews, probably the first thing you wanted to put in the car was your phone and things to keep your phone charged. You might feel like it's a necessity, but in reality, it goes beyond your basic needs and in economics, it would be considered a want. Other things you might like to put in the car might include sports equipment. You might like to have a choice of clothes each day rather than just what you need. You might like to have travel snacks for the car or take a laptop with you. Our car trip dilemma provides us with an example of the basic economic problem. That is unlimited wants versus scarce resources. In this case, it's the unlimited number of things we might like to take on the trip versus the limited space that we have in the car to take it with us. In order to consider the basic economic problem on a wider scale, let's start by looking at the resources that go into the production of just one type of good, trainers. Leather, cotton and rubber will all be needed in the production of trainers. Each of these requires the use of scarce resources like land, labour and capital. Further labour and capital will then be used to make, market and distribute the trainers. Now trainers are just one product. When you consider the unlimited wants and needs of all of humanity, then you can see that the land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship that's available is simply not enough to go around. And this brings us round to the basic economic problem. How do we best satisfy the unlimited wants of society with the limited resources that we have available? Different countries approach the basic economic problem in different ways. It can be seen as a spectrum from market economies to planned economies. In a fully free market economy, all resources would be allocated by the market forces of demand and supply. Whereas in a planned economy, all resources are allocated by the state. You may be inclined to think of somewhere like the UK as a market economy and China as a planned economy. But in reality, both of these are mixed economies. While the UK tends towards being a market economy, there are areas we will discuss shortly where the government steps in. Similarly, China is largely controlled by the government but there are private enterprise firms that operate within China's economy. The main way we determine which goods and services are produced in the UK is by which ones are the most successful. Those that are the most successful make more profit and are able to afford more of the resources needed to produce further goods and services. However, there are certain areas in which the government is prepared to step in. Areas like health and education are deemed to be needs for the population and so the government ensures that there is a provision of these. Something like defence may not be something that people were willing to pay for individually but it's something that's necessary. Competition ensures that firms try to keep their costs down and ensures that we see products produced as efficiently as possible. 
However, the government enforces product standards so that consumers don't face unsafe products in producers' rush for efficiency. They also write and enforce health and safety regulations to ensure that workers are safe during the production process. The main method for distributing products in the UK could be described as user pays. That is, the goods and services go to those people who can afford them. However, the government operates a system of taxes and benefits that helps to redistribute some wealth to those that are most needy. In addition, they ensure free access to things like healthcare and schools. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope that's helped your understanding of the basic economic problem, and I hope to see you back here again soon for another GCSE economics video.